Sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you think, uh, nope, I'm done. This is why they were diving into the 10 absolute worst Easter eggs of all time. Brought to you by Factor, an awesome food service that provides delicious, no-nonsense, quickly ready meals straight to your door, leaving us more time to find better Easter eggs. With over 27 meals to choose from, your meals are delivered fresh, never frozen, and as easy as possible. Just heat, eat, and enjoy. Head to Factor75.com or click the link down below and use code OddHeader50 to get 50% off your first Factor box now. Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is a 1993 side-scrolling beat-em-up game for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis in 1994, based on the anime and manga series of the same name. A mostly forgettable title derivative of games like Final Fight and Street Fighter, minus the fact it was one of the first games that let you play as Sailor Moon characters, which was more than enough for plenty of fans. The Super Nintendo version, however, did have an interesting easter egg, as by inputting a certain cheat code on this screen when Artemis appears, you'd get to see all of the characters barefoot during their intro screens. Uh, did Dan Snyder work on this game? Apparently this easter egg is a leftover from another scrap feature, which would have given the girls alternate outfits such as the ability to strip down to their swimsuits. So while it maybe wasn't as revealing as originally intended, if the reason for removing the original easter egg was to seem less pervy, they definitely backfired with that one. Dark. Thanks to Hall Sarah for submitting this to the Odd Header website. Realm Forge's Dark is a 2013 vampire stealth action game that, despite its perhaps interesting visual design, was met with devastating reviews upon release for its abysmally slow and frustrating gameplay, along with some incredibly bad dialogue, with Game Informer calling it at the time one of the worst titles of the generation. And appropriate of such a title, Dark happens to have one of the worst Easter eggs of any generation ever, as if you'd run to the basement of the nightclub at the beginning of the game, run into the bathroom and go into this stall. You can find a poster that appears to use the actual image of a real-life journalist on a wanted poster, saying he's wanted for a severe case of games journalism, with an extra bit at the bottom that says, Notice, if you see this criminal, lethal force is authorized. Shoot on sight. Holy sh**. The journalist in question appears to be someone that gave Realm Forge's previous game Dungeons a scathing review, which by all accounts appears to be the justification for this public denouncement of the writer. Hall Sarah points out this easter egg is especially heinous for several reasons, but mostly because it's likely flat out illegal, as it seems to have pulled off the civil offense of using the likeness of a real person without their consent, as well as the felonies of being a death threat and a public call to incite violence. Damn, guess Realm Forge doesn't like hearing anything negative about their games. Oh wait, did I say Dark was a bad bad game before? No, no, I meant a bad ass game. Truly a ballsy and short-sighted move by Realm Forge, considering this could have very easily landed the studio in legal trouble. Likely only skirted by the fact that literally no one played this game at the time to notice it. Are you guys sure that critic wasn't onto something? Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike released in 1999 for arcades with many later ports to follow throughout the next decade. The game wasn't initially popular upon release as it was a 2D game in the middle of a 3D craze, though IGN named it the greatest fighting game ever made in 2022, stating its detailed character animations are still some of the best around. One character's animations, however, may have been too detailed, involving a character named Oro who's more than 140 years old and has mastered the secrets of immortality, a secret I'd rather he keep to himself, however, occurs when Oro does his sweep. As for one single frame of the animation, you can see Oro's dom. And for those of you wondering if maybe this was just a coincidence and the animators just accidentally made it look like Oro's showing off his joystick, here's the previous frame in the attack that can reportedly be found in the beta version of the game, which puts Oro's coin purse out there for everyone to see. Glad they cut that one. While Oro's surprise probably slipped by players in the arcade version, the animation got slightly more noticeable with each port of Third Strike released for each console generation making this the only easter egg that keeps getting progressively worse as time goes on. Thankfully, when Oro returned to Street Fighter V in an update in 2021, Capcom made the decision to finally give the guy some damn underwear underneath his robe. And apparently, not everyone was happy with the decision. Personally, I've already seen enough Oro that I'll ever need to see again. Please, just leave the underwear on. Battlefield 5. The Battlefield series has its fair share of easter eggs and is no stranger to the channel, with many players searching the games for months or even years to solve some discoveries. A reoccurring easter egg in the Battlefield series is the game's Megalodons, the biggest shark to ever exist, which always manages to be more and more over the top each time they end up featuring it. Needless to say, fans expected a show when developer Niklas Ostron tweeted in March of 2019 that another Megalodon named Carrie was added to the game with the latest patch, and the first person to find it would win a tour of the DICE office. Players search high and low for their chance to win until YouTuber E. Fedrix finally spotted Carrie on the map Twisted Steel, with only a 1% chance of appearing. 
Wait, was that it? Did I miss something? Turns out, no. Apparently, this single dorsal fin coming out of the water is the Easter egg. And compared to all the other Megalodon Easter eggs of endlessly epic proportions, it all just seems a little underwhelming for a beast that scientists estimate to have been 50 feet long. I guess at least E. Fedricks won that trip to the dice office. At least they could tell them to their face that this Easter egg sucks. Spider-Man. Marvel's Spider-Man initially released in 2018 as an exclusive for the PlayStation 4, later released on PlayStation 5 and Windows. Despite being named one of the greatest superhero games ever made, the game contained one of the worst Easter eggs of all time, which only managed to get worse and worse as the story developed. The Easter egg initially began with developer Insomniac Games including a hidden proposal in the game, with the message, Maddie, will you marry me, on a movie marquee in the game's setting for a fan who requested it on Twitter before the game came out. Only problem is, by the time the game actually released, the fan revealed that he and Maddie had broken up and claimed that she left him for his brother. Oh, Insomniac eventually removed the Easter egg, but not before asking the fan if there was something they could replace it with. Except the Easter egg went even more south from there, when the Houston press reached out to Maddie for her side of the story and she said she never left him for his brother at all. And that actually the relationship was a toxic one, explaining the fact he proposed through the game was telling alone, if she never played video games and could never get him to do anything else. So while Insomniac thought they were doing a nice thing, it turns out all this Easter egg did was exhaust everyone with a bunch of baggage from a tumultuous relationship that everyone would rather move on from. So much for just trying to do a nice thing. Making this easter egg especially awful as it'll probably be a long time before Insomniac ever takes another fan suggestion for an easter egg ever again. And who proposes via a hidden message anyway? Oh wait, Prince of Persia. The Two Thrones. Thanks to Derebos for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. 2005's Prince of Persia The Two Thrones is a sixth main installment in Ubisoft's popular action adventure series. The game sold 1.5 million copies within its first month of release and was praised by critics for everything from its story and characters to the level design and combat mechanics. One aspect of the game that was not praised was an easter egg hidden in the fortress area of the game, as during the second Dark Prince transformation before the chariot sequence. By climbing up this random pillar all the way to the top, you'd suddenly hear this. Sound team is composed of Alice Bernier, lead sound designer, and Lee Steitem, sound designer. While many players thought this was some sort of glitch, it's actually a horribly grating easter egg that endlessly lifts off the game's audio department. You'd think the audio team could have came out with something a little nicer on the ears. And the sound back for aggressive negotiation. King's Quest 2 Romancing the Throne. King's Quest is the fondly remembered classic adventure game series published by Sierra Entertainment. Proclaimed in the early 90s to be the best-selling computer game series of all time, less fondly remembered is a secret one of the developers managed to sneak into King's Quest 2. Despite the fact that King's Quest is frequently cited as being a children's series, King's Quest is actually an old-school text parser game, an outdated style of graphical adventure that was popular before point and clicks, where you could walk around the environment using the arrow keys and type into the text bar what you wanted to do. Do, such as look at rock or pick up trident. Some argue the text parser offered more freedom to players than point and clicks ever could, though data miners were surprised at the sort of things found inside of King's Quest 2's code that were permissible to the player. Uncovering the glossary of terms that the game accepts as valid, Sierra fans were shocked to discover that King's Quest 2 accepted extremely unexpected synonyms for all of the game's female characters. As you can see here, the game actually accepts and spits out responses when you type talk to bitch, look at c or worst of all, talk to burping gutter Holy sh**. Other terms include old hag and hose bag. Whoa, this Easter egg is so offensive. Sierra co-founder Ken Williams has even distanced himself from the egg, reportedly saying, I never read that Easter egg in King's Quest 2. I'd had nuked it, of course. And if Ken claims to have never read that Easter egg, he probably also never read the alternate dialogue that occurs when you meet Queen Valenice that could be reinserted with a single keystroke using the game's engine editor that made this normally wholesome acquaintance a hell of a lot more unfamily friendly. Her red pulls are one of the indications that her warm thighs would welcome your tender kisses. Damn, guess they didn't get the memo this was supposed to be a kid's game. Then again, this was the same studio that did Leisure Suit Larry in Soft Adventure, so I guess it was easy to get a little confused. Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark is the classic first-person shooter by Rare released in 2000 for the N64, designed as a spiritual successor to Rare's hugely successful GoldenEye 007. The game was praised for having levels far more detailed than the original GoldenEye, though one detail in the levels caught players especially off-guard. As eagle-eyed players began to notice that on every level of the game, they could find a hidden wedge of cheese in extremely difficult-to-notice spots. After players found what they thought was every piece of cheese in the game, 
nothing happened, leaving players pulling their hair out over what the wedges of cheese could possibly mean in the game, with many assuming it was yet another troll by Rare to drive players crazy, like the previously covered unexplained question mark in the ceiling in the warehouse level, or the piece of chocolate behind the bars in Conquer. For 16 years, players wondered what these cheese wedges could mean, until finally an artist on the game, B. Jones, revealed an explanation in a video uploaded to Rare's YouTube channel. According to B, the cheese's existence was simply a reference to a comment they made to another artist, as B saw a plane the artist was designing for the game, and saw a doohickey on the plane that B said looked like a wedge of cheese, and thus, a piece of cheese was hidden on every map as the artist's signature. So after 16 years of obsessing about this mystery, it means Jack, Monterey Jack. Honestly, if it was a troll from Rare, I think we'd be a lot shut off. Counter-Strike Global Offensive Counter-Strike Global Offensive, better known as CSGO, is a 2012 online multiplayer tactical first-person shooter developed by Valve, creators of Steam and the highly popular Half-Life and Portal series, which are both desperately due for new fuller installments. Fortunately, in 2018, Valve at least gave Counter-Strike fans something new, and introduced a battle royale mode to Global Offensive called Danger Zone, and it didn't take long for something to immediately catch players' eyes, as by traveling to the easternmost edge of the map, they could find an area called Black Site that had a building with four suspiciously numbered rooms. Most curiously, players noticed that the three had fallen off the third boarded up door, which could only possibly be alluding to Valve's legendary elusive Half-Life 3. To get inside the room, all they had to do was go through door 2, which connected eager players to the third apartment, where they found a computer set up. They quickly found by hanging out in front of these computers for more than two minutes straight. A tone would suddenly play, followed by a woman's voice spouting random words. Papa. Golf, Papa, whiskey. Immediately, several players began to crack the code and figured out the first message used the NATO phonetic alphabet. With the initial message decoded, they were given PGP W50 and SMS757, both of which were two types of encryptions used for making codes. Players then figured out if they used PGP encryption to translate the rest of the message, they would end up with a hex value for every word. And when they translated those values using an SMS decoder, they got this message. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. Which is a reference to the iconic song Still Alive that plays at the end of the original portal. Making a note here. Huge success. Valve fans everywhere rejoiced as they realized that 3 outside the building wasn't a reference to Half-Life 3, but actually a reference to Portal 3, another long-waited installment from Valve since Portal 2 released over a decade ago, as they clearly uncovered another alternate reality game teaser for the next title in the series, where players would have to look for clues outside the game not unlike the same ARG players discovered years back in the original Portal that led up to its sequel, Portal 2. Players began combing through the game looking through every nook and cranny for more clues until the official CSGO Twitter tweeted that that discovery was just an easter egg and not intended to be anything more. Oh f come on. You put a three outside the door and everything. It's already hard not to get your hopes up and then they have to go do something like this. We're never going to see a third title from Valve, are we? The new Tetris. Tetris is a game everyone and their grandmother has heard of, being released on more platforms than any other game ever. It also has a movie coming out this month on Apple TV Plus about the crazy story of its release. The new Tetris by H2O Entertainment was an attempt to add some freshness to the series as a Nintendo exclusive in 1999, with some new gameplay mechanics and a soundtrack that left most critics fairly impressed with the team at H2O. One person who wasn't impressed with the team, however, was the developer who left their endless rant in the game's code that hackers managed to uncover shortly after the game's release. The more than 1,000 word rant labeled Dave Rant from lead programmer David Preeti begins by saying it was a fun time coming to San Francisco to work on the new Tetris, except there were a few problems. Dave says his producer sucked, saying all he did was sit around and play StarCraft and EverQuest and make pointless Excel sheets. He then targets a Nintendo employee for throwing off the team's work after he told them the higher-ups that the game's art wasn't unisex enough. He then shifts his focus to the game's composer Neil Voss, saying he's the laziest music guy he thinks there is, and that despite the end result was amazing, everything was last minute like pulling teeth. He then says he's leaving H2O to go work at 3DO, saying his time at H2O was some of the most fun he ever had, before saying this game sucks. Overall, seems like a success for David, although there's another rant directly underneath it labeled Mick Rant that lists Lupin's 50 most hated things, which is actually 56 things, and may just be one of the worst things that I've ever read. While there may be some decent criticism to find among Lupin's many, many complaints, Lupin spends most of the time sounding like a complete asshole, focusing aggressively on things like black women's hair, spandex pants where he can examine people's unmentionables, which he describes as offensively as possible, or how people with too much stuff in the rear windows of their car he should be allowed to shoot. 
the f loop and then goes on to complain about not being able to run over bicyclists and an idea to commit a terrorist act at a festival for female artists. Sounds like this guy has some problems. Lupin even lists 35 as racist is people and the crap that they spew out. The irony seems to be lost. And then that's followed by an ASCII art of mushrooms, a Canadian flag with a maple leaf, and another kind of leaf I can't display. Wow. Apparently the team was also convinced these messages weren't going to be found for years, except they were found and shown around the internet only three days after release which instantly landed the entire company of H2O in hot water with Nintendo, with H2O closing a couple years later. And David said he was going to leave for 3DO, which closed its doors right around the same time. So really, no matter which way you try to crack it, this egg is just straight up rotten in every way imaginable. And thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. If you're like me, you may have a busy schedule where it seems like there's never time to make a meal or even grab a bite. Enduring horrible Easter eggs can be a full-time job, so when Factor sent us a bunch of freshly prepared non-frozen meals that we could quickly throw in the microwave for two minutes, it simply made sense. Not only are the meals fast to make, but they're extremely high quality and of course delicious. Though I especially love their smoothies, which you can add onto your order along with other ready-made snacks and breakfast. Factor is quick, easy, fresh, and delicious and integrates perfectly into a busy lifestyle. I'll definitely be ordering from them again. Head to factors75.com or click the link down below and use code oddheader50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you know of any other Easter eggs you think would be considered the worst of all time, submit through oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slides for helping get the footage in this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, BitWith27, Chad Biscuit, Combat15 Bull, Flex, Grow Ups, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Fox M Cloud123, Miss Arctic Foxy, Rackman22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Rolkot Mifula, Starcore2, Tenryu Yu Yarnet, Taren Stock, Towerizer, Chow Z, and Yan Baneer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.